Uh, the U.S. and China have had divergent paths on infrastructure. Uh, the U.S. has invested less than 1% in infrastructure for the last decades. China, on the other hand, has been investing 8% over the last uh, couple of decades in infrastructure and has developed an, an extraordinary infrastructure industry, which, of course, uh, it has exported uh, globally. Uh, but the U.S., of course, has started a $1.2 trillion infrastructure program, uh, which was a bipartisan effort by the president, which is a huge success for the administration, uh, given the support that it got uh, on a bipartisan basis. And that plan is going to revive and improve American productivity for decades to come. So there is an opportunity there as the U.S. invests in infrastructure and China uh, has already established its presence uh, to do something together. But it's going to be tough and challenging given the global situation. Exactly, and which is why the timing is so interesting, right? Because at this point in time, and we were having this discussion earlier, uh, you're talking about inflation being a key risk that could eat into growth. And so with commodity prices going up, your, your spending bill will only go up as well. And so can governments afford uh, to look at such a cooperation, uh, collaboration and cooperation at, uh, at this time? Look, it's a great point. Um, when you look at the uh, statistics uh, the war in Ukraine is impacting the U.S. and the global economy. If you look at CPI, uh, it's been 7.5% in the last 12 months. The consensus numbers uh, for next uh, for tomorrow's CPI uh, is about 7.8%, of which uh, the energy component is up by 30%. Uh, so you already have an inflationary environment. If the war in Ukraine continues you're going to get a turbocharged inflation where, unfortunately, it will exceed 10% and will approach inflation rates that we've seen in 1979. Today's inflation of 75 is the highest since 1982. Uh, but in 1979, 1980, it was 13%, and with it was prime interest rates of 21%. You're absolutely right in saying the commodities has skyrocketed in terms of prices, so aluminum is up by 80% in the last month. Nickel, is, which goes into the production of steel blades, is up by 300% in the last 12 months. A copper is up by 30% in the last month. So all of that is eroding the ability to invest in infrastructure, and in particular, the $1.2 trillion bill. So one all right. additional statistic. Uh, PPI, uh, Producer Price Index, uh, and the inputs for infrastructure projects is up by 20%. That probably is an underestimate. So you're talking about potentially 30% increase in the cost of construction. That All means right. $360 billion less than the $1.2 trillion bill.